beloved hearts of love's eternal presence, it is Papa Son who greets you this day in the fullness of my love. Let's take a deep breath together. And let us visualize and feel that great inner light that abides within each of us. Perhaps visualizing a golden sun's presence of light that fills our chest cavity. Will you join me, precious hearts, in the following prayer call? With much sincerity, communing inwardly the following. Today I make a choice for greater harmony in my feeling side of life. So determined I am to be the master of all that takes place in my thoughts and my feelings. And as I come to understand the importance of greater harmony all throughout my day, every day, and that this too opens the way for each of us to become an open door in which the flame of divine love expresses seamlessly through each of us. As we acknowledge the flame in our heart and as we acknowledge a golden sun's presence of light within the chest cavity. And we imagine the great love rays that come forth from that inner sun's presence. We call upon those love rays to be charged with the pure presence of harmony and those rays to charge the presence of harmony into our minds and bodies and out into our world. And so too, we reach up to the great love rays of our higher self, our great God presence I am, and we call upon our presence to release its mighty love rays charged with the presence of divine harmony into our beings and worlds. As we accept those love rays, releasing their greater harmony into our lives and out into our world through our beloved I Am, together we reach up into the Ascended Master's octave, and we call upon the God and Goddess of Harmony. We love and bless them for their gift to life, and we call upon them to unite with our own God presence and our heart flame in releasing their great cosmic rays of Ascended Master Harmony into our being and all activities and energy of our life and our world, and we love and bless them for their service. My beloved great God presence, holy flame of love within my heart, God and goddess of purity, God and goddess of harmony, angels of harmony, it is my desire to experience the absolute purity of harmony. And if I could only experience this, even for a few minutes, I trust that the experience would be so profound that I would thirst and hunger for the experience and mastery of harmony in all my days and all my ways. Therefore, my beloved I am, great host of light, Whatever is necessary through thy sacred fire, love, purity, and power, I call forth this experience in the coming days to be raised into the divine presence of harmony and all its purity 
such a profound experiences that releases too the music of the higher spheres in, through, and around me. It is my desire, and I come to you, beloved I am, and great ascended host, with a sincere desire within my heart for this gift, to experience this gift in the next few days. And I am so grateful. Deep breath. Today, beloved hearts, in my time with you, there are a few things that I would like to speak into, things that I have not spoken into for a while, that I feel are important. I wish to speak into, and therefore pray it will receive some of your attention, that which is the unifying of the great divine presence, of the masculine and feminine attributes of life. There is truly a great effort being made now by your soul, your spirit, your beingness, and all that you are, to bring forth the divine activity of all that is masculine and feminine fully balanced within each of you. Over these last few years, many activities have been accomplished, and today there is a real disengagement by some on earth. Those who are disengaging from the knowledge of good and evil and re-engaging the tree of life. And with that must come the end of the crucifixion of Eve that begat in Bible stories of Adam and Eve. And together embrace the resurrection of Eve. And all that Eve represents a divine feminine presence so that greater presence of divine feminine and the freedom of will that is the gift of the feminine can be restored within our feeling side of life and become fully balanced with the divine masculine. Beloved, the world knows not of how this story of Adam and Eve in the Bible has created centuries and centuries of blame upon Eve. And that blame has been fostered and continued against the heart, against the feeling side of life. Beloveds, I ask you to be very honest with yourself that that which is the human judgment of placing all responsibility of all that went wrong in this world long ago, placing that responsibility on Eve that yet finds its expression in yourself when you are willing to engage in the activity of blame. To realize all energy of the assault upon Eve long ago was to point the finger of blame upon Eve, was to point the finger of blame upon the feeling side of life for all that brought down, brought the fall of humanity. And I ask each of you to be very conscious and sensitive to what you feel at all times. And if you feel that the energy of blame is acting within you, 
realize you have been given a treasury of resources and means to come face to face with any feeling you know is not love. Blame is not love. You don't require the morality of society to tell you when there is a feeling within you that is not right, within your own inner feelings. I urge you to recognize the long historic and unfortunate activity of the blaming of Eve in the story of Adam and Eve and how in fact this has been a sinister plot to blame and shut down the feeling side of life. Do everything you can to free yourselves of the energy of blame. Remember, Mother Akasha urges each of you to take upon the mantle of essential harmlessness. Be willing, precious hearts, to resurrect yourself into greater accountability and responsibility. Be willing to remember that we support you and ask you to accept that the time of hard lessons can be over in your life. Life can be a sweet stream of reflections and relationships that offer a greater avenue in life to be reflected back to you, such a presence of love. Together, let us embrace essential harmlessness towards the divine feminine, the heart, the feeling side of life. If you really engage your life that you live and you engage the activity of harmony, this will make your life, beloved hearts, an open door to the greatest powers in the universe. All the truth that has been laid before you in your studies is nothing compared to the greater truth that in accepting, adoring, loving, and communing with the great God presence within and above you, and calling it forth into greater expression through your life, and then maintaining harmony within yourself so that the love of your presence can freely flow through you, the greatest gift. And this releases the greatest activity into your hands and use the gift of divine love. Divine love, precious hearts, is the joyful reservoir of life and the treasure chest of the universe. And when that is an actual presence that expresses in and through you, it must clear the way for all the blessings in life to flow through you, to flow back to you, then you just cannot remain in the presence of lack. Lack cannot function, exhibit, or demonstrate itself in the presence of divine love, whether it be lack of health, companionship, supply, understanding, lack cannot exist in the presence of divine love. The activity of blame will 
stop that flow of divine love. Divine love is love, wisdom, power, and substance. It is an actual presence, a greater presence, that can radiate out from each of you. Be conscious of this. Acknowledge it. Call it forth. For within the presence of divine love is the activity that brings about the final resurrection of that which is the divinely masculine and divinely feminine attributes within each of you so that those attributes can come back into magnificent unity. There has been much focus in recent years in reclaiming lost will, being open to your feelings, healing your feelings, opening the way for the Divine Feminine to come back into expression. We've asked you to understand that your heart, the Holy Spirit within, the feeling side of life, and the soul are all expressions of the feminine side of life. You know, precious hearts, I would like to share with you something I shared with our students long ago, and it is this. Up until the time of Jesus' ministry, always in the world, there were and was a vital council of oracles in the world. And they were oracles, councils, that were made up of wise women. Women who had the great powers of wisdom and healing. And any prophet, any Renaissance master, any individual who has come forth in the history of 14 million years of civilization, who has influenced humankind in such wonderful ways, such individuals were often led to these councils of oracles, the wise women. Twelve women that held within their sacred heart, womb, soul, sacred feeling side of life, the divine feminine, that gave them the ability to see in all directions and to provide the wisdom or the route to healing or enlightenment for anyone that would go to seek the counsel of these wise women. What you may not know is that through millions of years past, there have always been two councils of wise women on earth. And what you could consider the two wide reaches of your planet. They've always had been there beyond the reach of humanity, right up to the time of Jesus. And after his ministry, their time of service came to a conclusion. As those wise women were holding the sacred balance to hold back, and those wise women were holding the sacred balance to hold back waves of assault against humanity and the earth. And if they did not assist holding that back, the possibility of embodiment on the earth would have been lost centuries ago. 
because you live on a feminine planet. And the disregard of the feminine side of life has been such that it has so impacted your planet, which is feminine in nature as well. After the time of Jesus, these councils disappeared. After the time of Mother Mary and Mary Magdalene's resurrection and the influence of their resurrection and ascension upon some of the women in the world, some women began to reclaim that inner will and majesty of the Divine Feminine. It is my prediction that these councils of divine oracles of sacred women will begin to reappear in this new golden age. And who will make this happen? The resurrecting women of this world, being guided by their own inner feelings and will. And for the preparation of this, the return of the sacred women, the sacred councils, the sacred oracles. Each of you must take greater steps to bring forth the balance of the feminine and the masculine within yourselves. And so too, I say, to the divine gentlemen out there. They must find their way back to the divine masculine. Today people everywhere are stepping into a place where there is greater communion between the masculine and feminine parts of themselves. A greater honoring a new beginning comes soon of a new dialogue with you. And that is to understand that as we speak into the necessity of the councils of the oracles, the sacred women, to begin to reappear on this planet, how important it is that the gift of the Divine Masculine show up within all of you gentlemen. And I encourage you gentlemen, as well as you ladies, to honor that which is the Divine Feminine side of life. The Divine Feeling and Heart side of life. And especially those who choose to be born into feminine physical garments. I ask you, beloved precious hearts, what is it that will grow your own personal sense of power, your own personal power of being divinely balanced between the masculine, the mind, and the feminine, the heart feeling side of each of you? What is it that will grow your personal power of being divinely balanced of these two attributes? I say to you, a greater understanding and appreciation for the journey, for the experience, and understanding and contemplating that which is essential and requires to be experiential. Not wanting to run to the victory of resurrection or ascension or your targets without enjoying the adventure, the journey. For when you have rich experiences, my dear ones, 
Those rich experiences reward you. The mass of humanity often wonders why there are a few individuals that just love to go to a museum or love to go off to the theater, etc. And I assure you that all of those who engage in it and are true to it and love the experience of a great musical, an opera, love the experience of Hamlet, these ones become part of the experience, fully engaged with the experience itself. And while experiencing a great theater, there is nothing going on in the back of their minds. And such experiences can be the fellowship of a friend, a dinner, a lover. You have an evening out, great conversation, good food, excellent wine. And it is a wonderful, relaxed evening. And you are fully engaged in what is before you, in what is in front of you, and engage all parts of the experience. And there is nothing going on in the back of your mind. Then your mind, your life is open and receptive to the value, the virtue, and the rewards of essential experience life can bring you in this way. And how these essential experiences, they naturally contribute to you being better balanced in the masculine and feeling side of life. So my message to all of you this day, get more experiential. That's the key. Engage. And how can you engage something if you don't give yourself the time periodically to do so? To periodically get lost in some great experience. I know it's a strange phrase, being willing to get lost in the experience of something, the experience of a live play, a musical. Truth is, you never get lost. It's a phrase. But understand, if you go to Shakespeare or any of the wonderful Broadway plays, there are those who are there with it all happening and unfolding. And when you are fully present and fully open and fully engaged, your mind is quiet and receptive. And all that is coming at you from the stage of virtue and value and beauty and the stories and the magnificence, all that is being acted out or expressed becomes a part of you, becomes experiential, and it lifts and builds and expands you, and it helps you, beloved hearts, to be better balanced in your masculine and feeling feminine side of life. And when you are balanced in these two sides of you, less and less will you find yourself victim to that human habit of blame. It is important, beloved hearts, that you groom your own personal tree of life. And that the way you groom your own personal tree of life is by making sure that your own tree 
even if you have the roots, the trunk, the branches barren. What is it that will make your tree of life ensures that it is lush and full and green? What is it that will do this? It is by giving yourself experiences, losing yourself in the experience, become one with it. Because then the mind and heart are working together in unity. You are allowing mind and heart to work together. You are open and receptive. Anything of great value in this world that has withstood the winds of war and treachery and hatred and deceit has come forth through great souls such as Renaissance masters, the arts, music, architecture, masterpieces. Why? Because the soul of these individuals was involved. There was balance between their masculine and feminine side of life. Anyone can produce something good, even excellent. Yet there are always those few who produce a masterpiece. And it is these ones who have gained access to their soul. And the ones who gain access to their soul are those who are most balanced in the masculine and feminine, the mind and the heart, and have recognized that because of the past, there must be extra effort in honoring the Divine Feminine. Today you all are beginning to experience the opening days of access to the soul. You have learned that the feeling side of life, putting your attention on your feelings, harmonizing feelings, healing lost will, honoring the inner child, face your issues, heal your core perceptions. All of this, so important, and all of this, so that you could quicken your feeling side of life, your feeling body, heal your emotional body, and honor the divine feeling side of life, the feminine, within yourself, and within others. What happens when you heal your feeling side of life? What happens when you stop attacking the divine feminine? What happens to the great electromagnetic fields of energy involved? Those fields vibrate faster. Their rotational fields are quickened. And then the expressions of love in your feelings pass through into your physical body. What a gift. Beloved hearts, the soul is a great orchestration. It is the highest and greatest activity of divine feminine. The divine feminine in exaltation. As each of you furthers your awakening, the soul is now seeking to play the music of the higher spheres through you. And as that music is played through your mind, body, your spirit, if you will couple this with the realization that your way to develop and balance the masculine and feminine side of consciousness is to allow yourself to enjoy the rich experiences of life. Enjoy the journey. And fully engaging everything before you, 
making sure there is nothing going on in the back of your minds. Then your journey is experiential. It's rewarding. So in all you engage in life, the finer things have always been offered by individuals who have greatness expressing through them. Somehow, or rather someone of a refined nature, connected to their soul, appreciates the finer things in life, holds value to virtue that expresses through their gifts and qualities. So whatever you do, Be fully present for the experience because your mind, your body, and the unifying principles of the masculine and feminine side of you then come together more beautifully. Realize, precious hearts, you have come to experience all that you are and then to begin to refine and evolve all that you can be So experience is as precious and as important as the victory at the end of the day. The goal is never actualized unless the journey, the experience, is fully realized. For this I urge each of you to honor the divine masculine, the mind, and to honor the divine feminine, the heart-feeling side of life, and seek their balance within your own life. So the key is to strengthen your tree of life, the experience side of life, commits your feminine and masculine side to work together. Did you hear that? The experiential side of life then commits your feminine and masculine side of life to work together. When you engage in something that is meaningful, beautiful, and refined, if you go to a museum or to the theater, all the virtue and love and value of the artists, their love and attention, And whatever is channeling through those who brought forth such masterpieces of music and art, all of this adds to you. Then the experience causes your masculine and feminine side to open, work together, and collaborate in wonderful new ways. What is experiential demands there be nothing going on in the back of your mind, but you are fully present and engaged with that experience, and then the masculine and feminine sides of you come into great collaboration. And with this, the reward is that you integrate the fullness of your being through such experiences. As given by Shakespeare, is of much greater value than the world yet knows. The mighty great Germain, who was Shakespeare in that embodiment, and who hid the keys of the universe within those plays. And so if you go to the theater and you engage Hamlet, and you are fully present, and nothing else gets into your attention, The inward collaboration within you has your multi-body system open and working together. And so whatever is the great quality or value offered in that experience is absorbed. It is experiential. This can even happen with a film, a motion picture. You can be changed somewhat, somehow. It is in all this experience of experientialness that allows the leaves on your branches to become full and lush, and this creates the power of magnetism. 
with that foliage growing on your tree of life. Your tree of life is perfectly balanced, masculine and feminine. But the foliage is the feminine. And when that foliage comes about and bears fruit, is because you allow the experientialness. That's what increases and enhances the foliage on your branches of life, the feminine side of life, the law of magnetism. And that rich foliage invigorates the law of magnetism and attracts to you everything, every power, every blessing, every open door, every person who can help you to become a powerful force and influence in this world. It's the foliage. It's the bloom that is the law of magnetism. And all these open doors and support systems are magnetized to you, comes into fulfillment. And when the bloom comes, which represents all the accomplishments, all come forth, and all your creativity and hopes, dreams and aspirations, attainment coming forth, and expressing in your life experiences. And such a support system comes around all that you have to do at the end is just delegate and direct. The power of the union of masculine and feminine in you keeps in you the presence of that virtue that St. Francis had within him. The virtue of temperance, it is temperance that keeps you balanced. And the three virtues of St. Francis were courage, temperance, and humility. Your destiny, beloved hearts, is elegant. Think, contemplate, and feel these things. I am a son and love each of you and will assist you in these matters if you call to me. Namaste, namaste, namaste.